You don't clean them at all? Never. You don't have a spray? I'm gonna be honest, I don't. Maybe I should what? start cleaning the mics. How many how many mouths have touched this microphone? Well, this is episode 226. Yeah. That's sick. Do you know what's in here? It's just a little bacteria. Do you throw it in the washing machine? No. I could, I guess. Yeah. At the very least, you could toss it in the Maybe dryer. Maybe get, get some something. spray. Yeah. Yeah. We well, literally use like a little disinfectant. It's probably meant for a bathroom. But this this is like a this is more like a bachelor pad podcast setup. So y'all don't clean up. We just do. We clean, we clean <laughs> like, up. So y'all don't <laughs> wash anything. That's crazy. It's a oh, little. Wow. I guess a different setup. Um, because you. So you're a radio host at um at High ninety one yeah. Norfolk State, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, I guess, at the college. Do you, well, do you go there yeah. still? Do you still go to I do. I'm doing my master's right now. Okay. So I graduated, but I'm back. So yeah. I feel like that's more like a professional yeah. setup. I don't know. I mean, it is. It definitely is like better than a lot of, you know, in no shape. It's better than a lot of stations that I've visited. Um, oh, like other radio stations? Yeah. Okay. No shade. Look, if y'all ever try to hire me, don't. Ah. But no, it's just, you know, we have like top of the line equipment and things like that. I'll say for sure. Sorry. <clears throat> what kind of uh, equipment do you guys use, I guess? I don't know the names of anything. I just know that it looks a lot better than everybody else's. I'm going to be honest. Like, um, when I did visit a station, I won't say which one, I guess, but they look like they're using material from 1980. I'm not even kidding. It looks so... What do you mean? Like, you're talking about, like, the mics? The no, like, equipment, okay, or? so, like, our operating board... You know, the mics, I guess they're... No, no, they were older mics, too. Um, but their operating board and everything, like, the... Software was similar, but the operating board itself, old. It looked like something from a 1995 recording studio, and mm. not in a good way. But, I mean, I guess it gets them, gets them on air, so it does a job. Yeah, how does, so how does it, like, I guess, how did you get involved with being a radio host there? I think DJ D, uh, DC used to be a host there, right? I'm not sure. DJ DC. You know who that is? He's yeah, on one of three jams. Yeah, but I don't. I think he was because I feel like he just posted because it was a uh, national radio host day the other day. Yeah. It was. And I think he posted like on, he made a post and it was like kind of where he came from. And I could have swore I said he was on Hot 91. Honestly, so, I'm So like, how did you, I, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say I'm learning every day about, there are so many people that used to be on that station that I'm like, oh, that makes sense. But like, I just, I would guess I would have never guessed that they started there. Um, but I guess it makes sense because I'm there. But I got started there. Um, one of my professors in undergrad actually is the general manager of the station. And he kept bugging me in class, like, you sound good. You would, you need to be on the radio. And I was like, that was never my intention. Like, I always wanted to be a TV girly. Like, I wanted really? to be, yeah. And I still kind of want to, but, like, I never saw myself in radio. I just never, I never thought about it. What do you mean a that. TV girly? Like, I wanted to be. Like an anchor, in, like, on, on camera? The, okay, so, Boom. Get to college, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to school to be a news anchor, like news news. But then I realized I really don't like hard news. I hate delivering negative news. Like, I don't like it. Mm, you got to deliver it with a straight face with, like, no emotion. Well, yeah. I feel like, also just side note, I feel like these days, well, like, back in the day, you'll see more unbiased coverage mm-hmm. where people will just kind of tell you the facts and this is, like, this is what it is. But yeah. I feel like a lot of, especially legacy media, is now just super biased. Yeah, and it is. Uh, I'm not going to lie. It definitely is. I think it's different than it was even 15 years ago. Um, But I think that's also why the news has become a little less popular. Like, it's still, they definitely still have a wide audience. And most people, I would assume, are like older um, Mm. who tune into like Channel 13, WTKR, uh, News Channel 3, things like that. Or at least that's why independent media has became so popular. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Because like, like, a lot of people like can't, they feel like they can't trust, like, uh, and people say mainstream media, but I wouldn't even call it mainstream anymore because they don't have the mainstream numbers. Mm-hmm. The independent media is actually what people are watching. So I think now the term is legacy media, mm-hmm. which is these like, just like these generational media corporations, but like people lost trust in them. Yeah, so that's why they true. went to independent media. That's true. Yeah, for sure. Um, and honestly, I think that's what even encouraged me a little bit because I'm like, okay, I don't have to take this route. I don't have to be a news anchor on the local news or anything like that. I don't have to do that because not to say that it's, you know, good to have a ping or like be biased when it comes to the news because obviously, you know, people have their different opinions, but being able to have your own platform where you can kind of share your ideas behind, okay, I have to give you this hard news, but let me tell you like what I think about it. Or let me tell you maybe how we can put a positive spin on it or what I think you can do to make things better. Like 
I think that's more suitable for the route that I would want to take. So I was like, I'm not doing the hard things. I'm not, I don't want to do that anymore. So I'm not going to do it. Um, why is there a plan B right there? That's not, <laughs> <laughs> that's not a real plan B. So Bobby Blaze gifted me that. Oh, okay, it's okay, a weed, right. it's a weed brand. Oh, okay, it's, okay. So it's actually an off brand. So sexy red has this sponsorship with this like weed thing that, mm-hmm. that looks like a plan B. Oh, and okay. he thought that was hers, but this is like a knockoff version of that. Right, but cool. it's, it's not a real plan yeah, B. Yeah, I've never seen that before. <laughs> we, we might like, have to, we might have to move that, that off the set. Like, don't even care. I was like, oh. We are not sponsored by Planned Parenthood. Don't worry. Yeah. I mean, you said this was a bachelor pad. I'm like. Is this couch clean? Like what's it is, it is, it is. <laughs> but no. We take a clean break in the middle of the pot. Yeah. But um, but yeah. So you wanted to be a news anchor at first. This guy yeah. tells you that you, I guess, have a great voice for radio. For radio, yeah. yeah. So well, oh my gosh, I've literally lived ten thousand lives. I'm not even kidding. Like I was going to college to be a news anchor. I decided I didn't want to do that anymore. But then I took a break from college for like a year. I was working a regular nine to five job, like behind a desk. No, it was a call center. It was behind a desk, but. I was like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I, you know, applaud the people who do the 95 thing. It's just, you know, not my vibe. But uh, nonetheless, I was like, no, I got to get back in school. So I went back to school. And granted, I was in media. Um, like, that was still my major communications. But I didn't think, like, I, I was like, I'm just going to get it because I want to finish what I started. But I don't really want to be in this field. What is the degree? Is it is it like a journalism degree? or what so, is it? My degree that I actually have is general broadca- broadcasting. That's the concentration, but it's an overall communications degree. I didn't actually major in journalism. Um, but it's kind of like you still have to take like journalism courses and things like okay, that. Okay, so there actually is a journalism like degree. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there for are sure. different things. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, journalism is more writing intensive, basically. So I just would have to have done more writing classes. But uh, what was I saying? I forgot. What was I talking about? Uh, you <laughs> took a break from college. You oh, did yeah, a nine okay. to five, came back to finish what you started. Yeah. So yeah. T- I was like, you know, I just want to get in here and do what I got to do to get my paper. And then I'm going to pursue entrepreneurship, which is what I actually was doing for like from 2019, 20, yeah, 2019 ish to about 2022. I was literally an entrepreneur. I co founded a tech t- company with a couple of my old friends. Um, what was that tech company? It was called Championship. So we actually developed a sports betting app. Um, I don't even know how they're doing now, like as far as the app goes, because I left in 2022. Um, but so yeah, you, was, you were there from the ground up, mm-hmm. helped build it, yeah. put it out. And now I guess this thing exists now. So it exists. I believe it's in the beta phase right now, though. So I don't know if it's available to download for everybody, but it's literally just a sports betting app like your FanDuel, your, you know, Bet365, literally similar concept. But we developed it back in 2019 before sports betting was um, legal. So it's kind of mm. like an idea like this could be good. You know, this could work. And then they legalized sports betting literally a couple of years ago. So I'm like, then big hey, stuck on it. <laughs> get into it. Do you have any stake in the company, I guess, though? Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. So you have oh, ho- high hopes that it'll blow up. Okay. What is it called? Can Lucky, you tell us what it championship. is? Championship. Championship. Championship, yeah. Do What is, I guess, some differences from that app? Versus like FanDuel or some of these bigger ones? Uh, the biggest difference is that there's head-to-head betting. So you can bet directly against a friend instead of, you know, oh, I got to bet against the book. Got to do a pool bet. Mm, anything so you can like take your yet. friend's money. Yeah. Mm. Low-key. I mean, it is lit. What can I say? It is okay. lit. Yeah. Um, but so that's what I was doing for like three years. I was like in my entrepreneurship bag. Like we raised a whole bunch of money for the company. Um, we were attending different conferences, you know, connected with a lot of people on that level. So a lot of people, you know, even today, like associate me with that. Like, oh, I thought you were in, you know, the championship when they got into the business. I'm like, you know, no. <laughs> oh, so I guess why'd you leave the company? Um, Just I guess I decided that I wanted to pursue media because I was still in college at the time and it kind of overlapped with my professor, um, you know, scouting me basically for the radio station and everything like that. I just decided like it was just best to pursue what I'd always had kind of like a seed of like that seed of being in media has always been in me. I've always thought like I would end up in something having to do with media. Um, but I kind of just ignored it for a while. I brushed it off because I wanted to do things that my friends at the time like wanted to do. Do you know what I mean? I just wanted to assimilate to their lifestyles. And so that's, that's really what I was doing. Um, but yeah, so my professor was like, yeah, you should be in radio. I was like, I really don't want to. So I pushed that off literally up until my last semester of college. And I finally went to the station, did like a test, uh, run on the air and the rest is history. Literally. 
How does the how does the I guess like what is the system of radio at High ninety one? Is it something that's like playing all day? It's like mm-hmm. it's like a loop that's on loop. Are you live throughout what do you mean the a day? Loop? Like, or do you record like an hour or two and it's like looping through the day where people can tune in and listen to it? Or how how does it work? Like, can you just turn on the radio? Like, where do you yeah. listen to it at? Like ninety one point one. So you turn on the oh, radio. Wait, so you're on because I, I listen to that station. I wonder I'm if I've ever live. heard you on that station. Whoa, <laughs> that's crazy. I really don't know. So. So you're you're just you're live, like what is the time like how does how is your I'm day structured? I'm ten to two. Okay. So I'm the midday. So there's and other hosts there as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm not the only radio host. So there is a show from our live shows. I don't even know. I don't think it matters that I'm saying this. So what, what, what do you mean? <laughs> like okay, so we're live. Literally, we are the most live station. Yes, we're lit and we're cool. That's not what I meant though. We're live. Like we actually have people in the building. You're listening to a real person and in real time. Like you click onto your radio while I'm on air. I'm sitting there talking to you. You know what I mean? Um, but from six to ten is our morning show, which is the Fresh Start Morning Show. Ten to two is me. Middays with Alana Mercedes. Period. Tune in. Um, and then from two to six is DJ Scandalous, and then six to ten is Ron TV. Now we record from like ten to two a.m. I believe, or ten to four a.m. Something like that. Those shows are recorded, which is called voice tracking in radio. So you record like a couple of voice breaks an hour, nothing crazy because like. It's the middle of the night. We don't want anybody at the station, you know, at the middle of the night. So, um, but the rest of the show is from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. completely live. We're live. Unless I, you know, like have an event to go to or, I don't know, a doctor's appointment, then I might record a little bit of my show. But no, I'm live. Like, I'm there. That's Mm. my job. (laughs) Is that stressful being live, like on the radio? No. Because these are all pre-recorded. Like, we usually, we drop the whole thing anyway, like the full hour. So it's Mm. like, now we're like, we're cutting stuff out. But I feel like it'll be a difference doing it like live, live. If people, if like, are you thinking about the people that are tuning in? Like, you know, that's what I mean? so cool because that actually is a difference. I notice that when I'm voice tracking, when I do have to voice track, I mess up a lot, and I'm like, no, let me stop, let me re-record that, re-record that. But when you're live, it's like, mm, it doesn't. I don't know. It's just like having a conversation, uh, and you get used to it. When I first started, my biggest thing was like, what am I gonna talk about? Every talk break, I have to say something like. Nice weather we're having, like, ah, uh, yeah. Mm. What are you guys doing this weekend? Like, it's kind of, that was nerve-wracking, but it's true that the more you do it, you just kind of figure out stuff to talk about. I don't know, it's like, I can't even tell you for real, like, how I come up with the stuff that I talk about. Like, my show does have segments, so uh, each part of the hour I do, or each part of every hour that I'm on air, there is something to talk about at a certain point. Like, I could just lead them on to, like, uh, yeah, tune in for your entertainment news coming up. Or uh, our lunch chat is coming up next. Like, so I could say that throughout the hours, but I don't know. Somehow you just find something to talk about. I don't. There, mm. There's always something happening. I mean, there's always something. Like whether it's local news, Pusha T and family helped a, com- a family in Virginia pay their power bill today, or like uh, there's a festival going on this weekend, or you know, Spartans, how are you doing? It's back to school time. You know, don't forget to use your resources. Or maybe if I just think of something random, I'm not kidding. And which is why I'm like, why do they put me behind the mic? I will say anything. <laughs> I forgot. But- <laughs> yeah, I forgot who it was. There was mm. a I forgot who the radio host was. It was some older white guy. Mm. Was it? Was it? Is it Larry? Wasn't Larry Larry King uh, a radio host? Was yeah, it Larry King? That's, at one point, I think it was him. He was in an uh, interview, but he was like. The very first broadcast he ever did, he was like just was super nervous, super mm-hmm. scared, and he got on the radio and was just honest with the listeners. He was like, yes. "This is my first ever broadcast. I just want to let you guys know I'm like really nervous and like I'll probably make some mistakes." But he mm-hmm. was like, "That is actually what made people fall in love with him." Yes, I kid so it's you like not. Being honest, like that's the best thing you can do, and it's not even well for me at least. It's not intentional, but even when I'm about to. I did the same thing for my first ever interview. Like when I had to interview uh, this band from the 90s called Troop. It was my first ever celebrity interview. Um, And I literally told them when they came to the station, I was like, guys, I'm scared. I was like, look, I've never done this before. So bear with me. Don't judge me. Like, let's just, you know, like be easy on me. So if I stutter a little bit, you know, don't mind that. I've just never done this before. But there's something about vulnerability that is so beautiful in humanity. I absolutely love vulnerability. I love when you're just honest about things. Like, if you're scared, then say that. Or mm. if you don't know what to do or don't know what you're doing, say that. If I mess up on air, I will literally, I won't skip over it. I'll be like, y'all, I can't talk today. Literally. Like, it's 
It's yeah. something about that. It's true. People do like level with vulnerability. It's yeah, true. vulnerability is. I feel like is is key. That's what I, I've told this story on the pod before. But mm-hmm. that's uh, so I went and seen a stand up open mic before, mm-hmm. and the level of vulnerability that these like upcoming stand up comics like showed. It was just crazy to me because mm-hmm. like you're, when you watch stand up, we're used to watching these professional people, right? They're just they're these polished hour long sets polished, and it's just yes. like professional. They don't really mess up. They don't skip a beat. But when you're watching these upcoming people and you can really see that they're vulnerable and they don't know if that joke will hit. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't hit like the awkward silences, that's what really showed me that like vulnerability translates yes. to the audience. Because we all experience yeah, yeah. it. I mean, we're all human at the end of the day, as polished as people like to put on like. No, we all mess up. We all do things like that that everybody else does. Like it doesn't make any sense. We're all experiencing human or I guess life at the same time. Like mm. also I think that's what made podcasts so popular. For it's sure. It's just an yeah. authentic conversation. Like you just people are being vulnerable. Mm-hmm. You're just kind of just like free flowing. Mm-hmm. How do you look at like today in the space of of hosting and people listening to people and getting information from people, like where do you see radio fitting in right now? Like with podcasts that are out, mm-hmm. um, yeah. How do you look at like podcast versus radio? Well, believe it or not, radio. You know, people like to believe that it's like a dying thing. I thought that I really did, but statistics, like the numbers, still show that radio is the most. Uh, I would say the highest mode of getting information for people even still, because if all the electricity was to go out in the world, we'd still have radio satellites. You know what I mean? So you'd still be able to We might not have anything to listen to it on, though. Hmm? We might not have anything to listen to it on, though. Okay, for, look, touche. We're still on the air, period. <laughs> the satellite. We're on the air, nonetheless, on the air. it's up there, okay? <laughs> I'm just trying to find a way to listen. Yeah, like, it, it's still available to you. But I think the biggest difference between radio and podcasts are probably... The fact that, well, obviously in podcasts, you can say anything. In radio, you cannot just say anything. Like, Have you been censored before or, or told like me? not to say something? Oh, told not to say something. Yes. I mean, <laughs> there's the obvious things. Like on my station specifically, during my show, I can't be too political, for instance. Like I can't say anything... I mean, I still kind of do. I'm not going to lie. I was going to say, like, I go can't ahead. say anything that sways people left or you right. You can't tell people to go vote for Kamala? I can say go vote. I can't say for Kamala. Mm, I would just say, that's respect, respect you know, vote, so, though. and that's what I typically, I like. Even, even like we touched on earlier, the, mm. um, the uh, biased journalism, that's okay to be an opinionated journalist. That's yeah. What, is, what, isn't it called an op-ed? op-ed? Or it's like an op piece? Or it's Something like an opinion like, piece. Yeah, yeah, opinion Those, piece. That's a real thing. Mm-hmm. You're allowed to have opinion pieces as a journalist, but I feel like the 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 trick is, to, or not the trick, but the weirdness of it is when you act unbiased, mm-hmm. but you really are biased. Yeah, which you know is, what I mean? it, again, that ties right into vulnerability. Like, you have to be honest. If you're going to be opinion-based, that's fine, as long as you're honest about it. Like, don't try to put on. Like, don't try to put on. If you are, then be that. You know what I mean? Um, so they don't, they don't let you be political. Yeah, not too political, can be too political. And granted, it's not just on my station because there is a show uh, on Sundays called State of the Water, and that is strictly political. It's run ran by a man who works alongside presidents or has a you know uh, experience doing that and uh, still works in it now. So Wait, it is what, what, po- is he, what does he do with presidents? I can't remember. He's some sort of, I know he's a speech writer for the president of our university of NSU uh, for actual presidents. He's some sort of liaison. I cannot remember his actual. This is the host of that other of station. Of that other show. Okay. Yeah, on our station on Sundays. His name is Dr. Clavill, Eric Clavill. Um, but I know he does like his, oh, he's a lawyer, duh. He actually works with politicians though, but that's like his job job. Um, but for me, yeah, like I'm. You know, it's supposed to be the, you're at work, I'll keep you company, give you some good music, nothing too crazy, you know, like, just, yeah. So I can't really be too political on my show. Um, I'm trying to think, like, typically I'm allowed to, well, I can have an opinion if I want to, but I'm allowed to speak about my opinion um, on most things. It just can't be anything that could get us sued. Um, Like, I can't obviously go on a... Cursing? What about cursing? You can say curse words like I don't. I just don't curse on the radio. I don't. I don't know. I don't like. I wouldn't do that. I don't know. Something about it just kind of seems wrong for me. Like that's not really my vibe. Um, but you can. I know you can say like simple words like damn ass, but you can't say like you know the f word or anything. 
The F word is crazy. I didn't want to say it. PH, 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 you know that video of Miranda Cosgrove when she's asked, they're asking like, what's your favorite curse word? She's like, fuck. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I didn't want to say it. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to see, even now I'm thinking like, what can I not say? But Have you ever been pulled to the side? Like, chill out with that no. next time. Mm -mm. Okay. No, but I, then again, I feel like I'm a person who has good common sense to where I can kind of discern whether or not I should talk about a certain thing. Mm. So if I really feel like if I'm thinking to myself, would I get in trouble for this? Then it's typically a no for me personally. That's, I guess that's also another reason people will trust independent media more because it's usually just a small crew. Like it's me. Okay. If we're Facts, talking about yeah. Joe Rogan, for example, it's mm -hmm. just him and Jamie. Mm -hmm. There's nobody telling Joe Rogan, like in a board meeting, don't talk about this. Make yeah. sure you make sure you do talk about this or like pulling them to the side. Whereas in these big media corporations that, that happens. Mm -hmm. you, you'll get pulled by your superiors and like, yo, like if this is the issue, we're on this side of the issue. Mm -hmm. Like make sure you, you talk about this or like, I don't know. Yeah, no, um, that's absolutely yeah. true. Which is why, again, I want it to be cut from the idea of being in, on an actual news station or news platform because there are things like that. I mean, you know, certain stations are completely biased, completely. So I wanted to remove myself from being in that like, situation. Like the Breakfast Club. I didn't realize how uh, political The Breakfast Club was till I got older. Maybe they weren't always that political, mm -hmm. but I just feel like, yeah, they're super uh, pro-Democrat now. Like how? Like what makes Char you think Charlemagne that? is well, yeah, a super Democrat. Of course. He's the Democrat bodyguard. Yeah. For real, for real. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I, mm -hmm. just, I get older and like I start paying more attention to what's going on in the world, which I guess I wasn't really paying attention mm -hmm. when I was younger. Um, okay, so you... Do you have a DJ that's playing music? Are you also in charge of the music that's being played? No, and people don't station? understand that either. People will literally send me stuff and be like, put my song. What do you want? I'm not a DJ. Yeah. Like, I can't, I can't do that, you know? Um, we have a content manager. The content manager puts the music in, approves the music, pulls new songs, approves the local artists, like, that's up to him. Now, Grant said, yes, I could be like, you know, hey, I heard this new artist. Listen to them. Tell me if you like it. You know, like that. But I don't actually put the songs in the system, except for like my um, Hot One I Won, the number one song of the day. I can put that in to get like I can give that to my content manager to put in. But even that, like I have to have that approved. So I can't choose the format of the station. The station is more like an alternative urban R&B kind of station. Um, if it was up to me, if I could add the music, it would not be that. Yeah. No, it wouldn't. Like it would be my playlist. You know what I'm saying? But no, that's not up to me. How? Um. Or I guess, do you know the like? How did this station? At, or how did Hot 91 start? Was it always at Norfolk State? Like, why did Norfolk State start this radio station that's really run by their students? I guess, and it's going out to the radio to the public in this mm. area. Like, how how was it started? At? So the station was actually founded in 1980. Um, it was founded by one of the professors. He's still here. He's so like, it started at Norfolk State. At Norfolk State. Well, okay. So the the radio station ninety one point one became available, and we got it. Like we we won it basically. Um, it was between us and ODU, and we got the station. Um, and again, it was started by one of the professors that's still there, Doctor Tickton, and a couple of other people. They founded it. Um, what was it? What was your other question? What did you ask me? Just how, how, how it got started? Yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much how it happened. Um, I don't believe it was always heavily uh, involved students. I don't. It wasn't always run by students. And although, like, most of us are in school and students, a lot of us actually have a background in radio. Um, a couple of our people came from 103 Jams. Um, like, uh, DJ B came from 103. Our uh, marketing director, coordinator, and... Uh, I guess you call her an over promotions as well. She was worked with 103 Jams for 20 years. Um, Heart Attack, our content uh, manager, he, his resume is actually ridiculous. This man has worked with all sorts of artists from the 90s um, or the 80s and 90s up until uh, I guess he started working in radio. Heart attack. I feel like it's a crazy name to have. It's such a good, it's such a cool name. And it's so funny. I always, I forgot to ask him even where did it come from? Everybody or somebody told me like, ask him where you got that name. I feel like when he asked me, I mean, when I asked him, he brushed me off, but I'm gonna find out. Um, I don't know where that came from. I'm weak. Um, but yeah, most, oh, and then Scales, our general manager, he has a background in uh, radio, of course, sales, things like that. Um, but no, most people, yeah, they had a background already in media. But I don't actually don't even know when it started to become so uh, heavily student oriented. 
I know that because some of us, well, yeah, I really don't know. I don't know when they made the switch because I've been with the station for about a year, almost a year now. Um, and as long as I've been there, it is like a lot of students obviously on air, but I'm on, like, I'm a student, but I'm on the payroll. Like I'm not an intern or anything, you know, this are is most other job. people there are interns? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure. Yeah. Have, what about like the, so you've been there for like a year? Mm-hmm. What about the previous generation of hosts that were there? Like, what were their trajectory? Like, did they go on to do other radio? Yeah, for Or, sure. like, what? Um, some of them are up in D.C. Or one of them is up in D.C., rather. Uh, I know Scandalous, well, he's still there, but he's been at the station for a while. But he started out um, as a music artist, actually. He was a rapper um, back in, like, he started in 2000... Early 2000s, I can't remember. But he, at one point, he was on 106 in part. Um, who else? Yeah, most people went on to do things in media, but not in Virginia. Not in Virginia. A lot of people ended up moving out of Virginia. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. See, me, I'm pretty much like self taught mm. in this space. I, I grew up just always like watching interviews and stuff. Like, mm. I, I enjoyed watching just watching people's interviews and getting their perspective and stuff. And also, I always enjoyed like asking questions. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I'm we're very much self taught. So I am interested in like to hear about like some stuff you learned like in school about broadcasting. And, That's what's so funny and stuff like that. Like, what are some takeaways you've gotten from your education in broadcasting? It's gonna sound so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> because like I applaud everybody who was in school. Period. Myself included. I think it's a. Uh, it's important to, you know, be educated. I think it's important to, you know, if you're going to start college to finish it um, and to take what you can away from every all of the classes that you have to take, all of the experiences you have while you're in college. I think all of that is important. But in certain fields, I do feel as though college is not a necessity. It's not a necessity. A lot of the things that I learned in broadcasting, I learned by myself too. Or I learned being in it, just like doing it, not necessarily in class. The things that I really remember from class... I'm not even kidding. Like, I remember this one specific law that says that if I give one politician airtime, I would have to give another politician equal airtime, which is one of the reasons why I can't have a politician on my show. Because, mm. we, you know, like, that's one of the main things that I remember. I remember certain laws. But besides the laws, I'm like, me personally, I've always really, like, been a creative writer for instance so if i needed to write a new story i could write one i've always known how to speak that's kind of like i don't know i was just kind of born with that um so i like i didn't learn to talk on the radio like i i've always t- i people ask me how do you get your radio voice i don't know i just talk like this like literally um so yeah. it's that i learned to edit videos by myself because i used to make youtube videos like what, what kind of youtube videos did you make it's so funny. Okay, so I had a YouTube channel with one of my friends, so we would make vlogs. I had a fitness YouTube channel, so I was making, like, fitness videos, meal prep videos, stuff like that. Um, and then, oh, you know what? When I was in high school, um, I was in, uh, I was on the morning announcements. I was, so, too, actually. I think I, I can't, I was, was I telling you about this last week, Karen? I think I got fired. I kind of can't remember, but we had a morning show. It's actually video, too. We uh-huh. had some type of video morning show at yeah. our high school. And I think I was on it for like a few months. I really can't remember what happened, but like I wasn't on it for that long. Mm-hmm. But it was a cool experience. You can't remember what happened. You probably I may or may not have gotten fired. fired. <laughs> 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 you probably definitely got fired. It was like that never happened. Um, but uh, yeah, no. When I was in on the, the morning announcements for us are at my school was also like visual. So I was an anchor, but I also had to make stories. I had to record and make packages outside. Like I, uh, you know, had to take the camera work, do all of that by myself. I had to write the scripts. Like a lot of the stuff I learned over time, like while I was in college, in college, I think the greatest thing that I got, especially at Norfolk State, were the connections with the professors who have been in the field. Like even in the classroom, they'll tell you, you know, certain things you just learn when you're out there, certain things you learn by talking to people. Like a lot of the stuff in school, when I'm really thinking about it, it's like kind of just doing it for the grade. Yeah, no doing cap, it for the like, grady. I would say you can't. Yeah, like school, like school time or seat time can't really replace like in the field time. Mm-hmm. 
that that uh real world experience like means everything. For sure. For like, sure. I even know like I'm an electrician as well. So like oh, I'm, really? I really Yeah, I just work for I didn't know well, that. Thanks. Yeah, I work mm-hmm. for myself right now. But um so like we, I know I've seen people like well I didn't go to school for electric. Mm-hmm. I just graduated high school and went right into it and just That's learned, crazy because how do you learn something like that? Just on the job, like anything else. Wow. One one step at a time, like oh, one cool. thing at a time. Mm-hmm. But like so I remember seeing people that came from they went to college for it. They finish college, come to the field, and act like they're this badass. They went to college, mm-hmm. but they don't know shit. Period. And you know that is my biggest thing. Like, you go to college, and it's like, all right, you got the paper, but do you know what to do when you get out there? A lot of... Oof, no shade, no tea. I love my school. I love my professors, period. I would never say anything negative about Norfolk State. That's my home. But a lot of the professors, like, you... Some of them, not a lot of them, actually, not that's not true, but some of them have never even worked in the field, but they have the paper, they have the bachelor's, they have the master's, but you have not actually worked in, you know, radio, in uh, the news, like, in journalism. So, it's like, you can teach me the book, but when I get out there, I might be lost. There might be things that are in the book that are outdated now that aren't even going to help, you know, help like, Mm. yeah, while you're in the field. Uh, Period. Anything else that, anything that you do, you are going to learn by doing, not by. Especially creative stuff. Yeah, like people, Like people that go to school for like music or, Mm -hmm. or art, Like, I get it. You want to learn, like, the technical ways to do stuff. Or I feel like learning the history about something, that's probably the most valuable thing you Mm -hmm. can get from school, like, in any field. Just learning the history of how everything got to the point where it is now. Yeah, for sure. I feel like that could be beneficial. But if you're, like, doing creative stuff, I feel like the best way to do it is just throw yourself into it. For sure. And just Mm -hmm. find your style. You know what I'm saying? It just takes time. Um, So, okay, so you are the radio host. Um, You guys have music. I I guess I was... I guess that was a silly question. They're actually on the radio. I, I guess I've never heard your voice on the radio. Maybe for the most time I'm at work. When, yeah, I work, from, I from work the work two, hours. You're, yeah, like, you're like, on the work hours. Yeah. Um, so you also do interviews. Yes, I do. How many interviews do you think you've done? Um, what is some stuff like you learned from doing interviews? Like, was it hard to get into that? No. I Getting how, into interviews yeah. was never hard because I like to talk and I like people. So that was never like, no. How many think you, uh, have, do you think you've done? How many interviews? I don't know. Over 100? No. Oh, I'm, I'm not there yet. Okay. <laughs> I haven't done that many. No, um, probably. No, definitely. I guess it would be a handful compared to how many you've done. Like, maybe like 30. Okay. Yeah, maybe 30. 25, 30. Yeah. Because I feel like you guys have some big guests on. We do. Is that is that, like because you guys had on Fam Lay and Push recently talking mm-hmm. about the Cousins Festival. I see you had Omarion on recently. How are you? Are you connected with these people, or is like Norfolk no. State bringing them in? Like, so, how does that work? I'm not kidding you. Sometimes my content manager manager will text me an hour before I have to go to work and be like, "So and so is coming in. You have to interview them." Push That's a t- what happened. Pusha T and Fam Lay coming in today. P- I'm not kidding. Pusha T oh and Fam Lay and. Omarion, oh, I found out about an hour before. How did not that feel? kidding. Were you nervous? No, and that's the thing. I I thank God for that. I do not get nervous. I don't get starstruck. I don't. I can't think of anybody that would really have me fanned out. Maybe you know, Tyler you know the Creator. If Oprah maybe. came through. No. No. Oh no, and I love Oprah. <laughs> she said no. <laughs> and I love Oprah, but like, no, I just don't. I mean, if Obama came through. I would feel really, I can't, I don't know. Like I would have to just kind of be in it. But as far as I've like experienced, I don't get starstruck. Like Mm, I don't get super, especially if they're coming to me, coming into my space where I- They they should be starstruck to meet you. No, not like that. Who am I? Who am I? No, (laughs) No, it's just like, it's kind of like, like me coming in here. You know, you are very at home. You're very, you know, you know what you're doing. You've done this before. Like, this is your space. I'm entering it. So if anything, you know, granted, I feel at home. Just comfy, comfy couch. I know? will say that doing, because I've done podcasts outside of this place. Too, mm-hmm. Like we've traveled and I will say it's, I feel a lot more comfortable doing it here. How and was a, it when you did it at the Wayfest? It was different. It was, um, it was my first time doing something like that. Mm-hmm. It was cool because, so one of our guests was Batman. We've actually done a podcast here before. So yeah. that was cool. For me, it's all, it's all about feeding off the people's energy that mm-hmm. I'm talking to. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I could be one of those people that just talk to the camera just okay. by myself. Yeah. That's kinda, <laughs> that feels kind of weird to me. Maybe if I got used to it. But um, so having a familiar guest, that made it easier. But the really the biggest thing I didn't like about doing the live pod 
is we didn't have headphones, so this might Ooh, yeah. this problem might be alleviated with headphones. But I feel like we had to yell. Yeah, I feel that. So it's like we can't really hear each other that well. So mm-hmm. I just feel like if even if you go listen to it back, I feel like I'm yelling the whole time. <laughs> but it is what it is. But um, it was fun though. We're actually so I guess That's I can talk good. about it now because yeah. it's official. But we're doing a live pod at the celebrity golf match at Summit in the Water. Really? This year. Yeah, so that's that's that on the so way. Good. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you for that. Um, shout World out to premiere. Will from MSQ Shop. He plugged that plugged that in for us. But um, so yeah, we're doing. They're having like, so I guess I don't know if people don't know because they they did like a slight announcement on it on some, I think on Wavy they wrote an article about it, mm-hmm. but they haven't really said it yet. So usually something in the water is a three day festival. Right. This year the first day is going to be this celebrity golf match. It's like a golf invitational, and day okay. two and three are the festival. So it's really two days of the festival now. Okay. And so there's going to be some entertainment at the celebrity golf match. We're doing a, like a 30 minute live pod. And then they also gave me like two artist performance lots. Mm-hmm. So I got Stu Money and Sunny Moonshine performing. Mm-hmm. They're doing like 10 minute sets. And then they're also like before us, there's a, a, a podcast from Richmond that's kind of doing like a similar segment okay, cool. to us. Um, so, yeah, that's like part that's of the entertainment awesome. there. And I'm glad that they're even putting forth more effort to to involve the community, like what's right here, giving you guys a platform um, at an event like that. That's excellent. Very, Congratulations. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Thank you yeah. for that. Also, oh, actually, while, while, while we're on that, actually, mm-hmm. so what do you think about something in the water? Um, I feel like they do a great job at the festival. Mm-hmm. They have the local, like, local stages. But I do feel like there is more that they could do to have like ongoing events throughout the year to keep the, yes, um, to, keep the to keep the momentum going. Yeah, until for sure. the, uh, keep the momentum going and keep the spotlight on the city until mm-hmm. the next something in the water. Mm-hmm. Any any thoughts on that? So I think that something in the water individually could do some t- could do more throughout the year, like with their name on it, because it is you know. Still a relatively new festival here. I wouldn't say that it's old at this point. So, to keep, and especially since, you know, what was it, last year that I wasn't even here? Uh, or was that no, the year before? That was the year before, I think. And then the year yeah. before that, I think COVID messed it up. This is going to be the fourth one or third one? This fourth This will be the third one, right? Because there was one in, oh, wait. One, I went to the first one. Which was 2019, because I went to that one. DC, here last year. So it, okay, so, so it is fourth, the fourth. This fourth, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess I've, I went to the first and third one. Yeah. yeah, so I only went to the first one, and I'm glad I didn't go to the DC one because nobody seemed to like it. Everybody was disappointed in the DC one, mm. which is another reason why I think it's important to have the ongoing events during the year, even if it's like something small, like uh, I don't know, a something in the water. Uh, well, last year a talent show or something like yeah, literally. Show. I think last year they did a panel. They okay. did, they did, what was this, what was that thing called? They called it the uh, they did at the assembly building in Norfolk. Remember Pharrell threw it? It was like oh, that was a mighty dream for him. I was in there. Yeah, you were there. I was in yeah. there. So that was um, cool. That was an example of something a cool mm-hmm. event that's mm-hmm. throughout the year. Yeah. Yeah. So Pharrell does a lot of things. He has a lot of different endeavors, and I appreciate all of them because they always well most of them like are seven five seven centered. You know the things that he's bought here. Um, but as far as it being stamped something in the water, it hasn't been. It's always, it, it has been whatever it was, but it wasn't related to something in the water. So although he may be doing things here, um, which have been excellent, they've been really good for uh, entrepreneurs here, like people who want to, or young creatives even. He's been doing really good things um, for, for us. But as far as something with something in the water, no, I think that there could be even some sort of organization that he's assigned here to maintain that name. You know, mm, throughout like the year. Like, he doesn't have to necessarily do everything. Yeah, like, just, you don't have to have your hand in everything. I mean, we can tell that you're stamped on it, you know, but, yeah, just having some some people here to keep, like you said, keep the momentum going throughout the year so mm. that, that the excitement doesn't die out. Because, granted, people are excited about it, but it's like, even me, I'm like, oh, okay, so April, right? Because it's always in April, but I think back in March... Or so I figured out that it was going to be in October. And I was like, yep. even that is like, it throws people off. And granted, I'm not complaining that it's in October. I forgot March. why they, didn't they, did they announce why they did it? Is no, it because it was too it hot? No, but it rains every it weekend. Always, it always rains So like weekend. every, yeah. yeah, it's always rained that I remember weekend. the first year. So we went there the first day because the first day got shut down because the yes. rain. I remember this me and my easy. boy, I think, was, I, think was, I think it was actually Haley with me. I forgot who was with me. I remember us being on the bird scooters mm. in Virginia Beach, riding through the pouring rain to get back to the car because yeah. like, we just found out it was like <laughs> shut down. 
I was like, bruh. That's quite the experience, um, yeah. But yeah, I think they could do more. I'm always saying, like, I feel like we have a lot of cool stuff going on in the city. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm just trying to figure out how can we get the everyday person out here, like, aware of what's going on. That's I feel like we do true. a bad, even us, I feel like we do a bad job at that. Like, we're mm -hmm. we're tapped in with the creative people. Like, mm -hmm. if, you, if you're doing something creative in the city, you may know about the Off-Road Podcast. Mm -hmm. But if you're just, like, a ram random, like, plumber or, like, some random person, mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, we haven't figured out our way to reach you yet. What do you guys do at Hot 91? Like, any thoughts on that? Also, do you have any information on your demographics? Like, who's mainly tuning into 91.1? That's another thing. So, I'll answer that first. Our demographics are mostly, I find, people between about 25 and 60. That's a But most range. of them, yeah, but most of the people that I talk to during my show... They sound about middle-aged. Are these people that call in? People that call in okay. that I have actually spoken to. They sound about middle-aged or older. But I've also spoken to some very young people, people who are around like my age. And then I've also spoken to people um, who were like way older than I thought. So, But most of our demographic, I would say, is right in the range of like maybe 30 to 60. Okay. I feel like we have older listeners um, based off of the, the statistics. Um you would think it'll be different, being that it's a college radio station. Do people at, and it, do, at, do people at Norfolk State listen to you? Is that like a big thing it's around the halls? Like I heard you thing. this morning on the. I'm not kidding. Uh, we have just started pulling in the audience. Do you know, or pulling in the audience on the campus? Do you know that most people didn't know that our our college campus had a radio station how? up until very recently? Because, like you were saying, it's just not a good job of marketing it um, to that demographic of people. Like. We do a lot of marketing and we do a lot of partnerships, a lot of things like that with people outside. And we do a lot of um, activities on campus even. You know, if there's a activity hour, if there's a, you know, some type of event where we're celebrating the freshmen coming to campus or anything, it's typically us DJing it. But I think people just haven't been paying attention. I couldn't tell you exactly why. I don't know why. I don't know why it's very, it's new though that we're really starting to pull people in. But I think it's because we're using the students <clears throat> excuse me and myself at the station um well i'm a student too anyway using us to like start talking to the demographic of people that we see day to day you know in class or whatever like just start kind of pulling them in because like you might think on the radio station on the radio and this was just old people on the radio like no i'm on the radio like and i'm actually you know pretty lit like I, we have fun <laughs> so it's lit, like yeah. you know hey shameless plug maybe they also think about it as like this maybe they take it for granted or just think about it as some like regular thing because it is at their school. Another thing. It's just something at my school. Like, it's just some little thing at my school. Yeah, like. for sure. I'm 100% guilty of that. I think that I have downplayed the idea of my job in my head so much so that it is, it feels very regular to me. It just feels normal. It feels like, oh, well, I'm doing it. I'm sure you could do it. Anybody can do it, but it's not that kind okay. of thing. But it, it's it's not normal. And like I said, our station is top of the line compared to other um, commercial stations. Like, well, other commercial stations, bigger stations. Um, so it, it's it's a big deal. It is a big deal. Um, I just, you know, I think that we could do a better job at marketing ourselves at, like you said, just being more, um, just participating more in things that have to do with creatives, things that have to do with the plumbers, things that, you know, just making it known that this is something that's a blanket. It's really for pretty much everybody, especially when it's something like a radio station where you go there to get your information, to get your, your news, to get your entertainment. It's, it's a blanket thing. It's like, that's what it is. A lot of people forget that radio, you know, had its roots, like really small radio stations were the most important because it's about community. A lot of people, you know, mm. forget that your, your radio personality that you listen to, most of them, you know, not the syndicated ones, but like me, for instance, we live in the same area. You know what I mean? Like, it's all about building community. Your community should feel the impact of, or no, well, yeah, your community should feel the impact of, you know, having that person that is delivering the news to you consistently or having that person that's, you know, um, making you laugh every morning. Like, it's all about, at the end of the day, it's really all about that community. So I think we could just do a better job of, I guess, having our hand in the community as a whole, not just the station. You know what I mean? Like as people in our positions or with our platforms. 
You know mm. what I mean? Yeah, we had um we had DJ DC up here like what's like maybe like two years ago. We actually have an update pod coming up with him. Cool, yeah. But he was telling me like stuff about analytics that I didn't realize that radio stations had. Like mm. he was like, we see when you switch to the station, like when you turn it up, yeah. when you turn it down. Like it was like all this different stuff that like I didn't know they got that in, those analytics. Yeah. Do you guys have that? How do you so- gauge? your impact or your growth or you have like daily listener numbers like or how, how does that work so i don't have access to it but my content manager will come to me like probably once a month just to show me the updates on my numbers or show me but it doesn't go down to the detail like that for me as far as like you switch the station i can see like okay people are listening to 50 minutes out of the one hour of this hour so from 10 a.m to 11 a.m you're listening for 50 minutes from 11 to 12 you're listening for however many minutes or whatever um so i can see things like that when my content manager tells me about it but as far as the details i'm sure that they have that i'm sure that they're aware of that but that's a big thing yeah right there are people who literally still carry around little meters it's like a thing that it's like a, it's a people meter so you basically like it's like a little button that you have and you press it whenever you're listening it's it's interesting, but it's a very old way of. Wait, I, are you mean the listeners doing that, or somebody that's working at the radio station? Not somebody who's working at the station. There are certain people who are assigned these meters. Okay. It like tells you how many people are listening at that time. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like it's I don't know I don't know how it exactly how it works. Another thing that actually that's something that was discussed in class. I'll give you all that. Um, but yeah, that's that's a thing. So that's also how you measure. And I would think that being that this is the di- the digital age, that something like that is kind of outdated, like having a physical device you use to to take down that information. But no, that's a very real thing. Um, but uh, yeah, besides that, I don't know. I guess you could j- just the same way that you can get ratings on a you know a TV show, like how many people are watching a TV show, more of the same. Mm, yeah. I guess I was just really thinking because for. For things that exist like that, we'll just call it legacy media, radio stations, Mm -hmm. um, cable, Mm -hmm. like you got cable, you got TV shows that are just playing on a loop. You got stuff that, that like will exist no matter how many people tune in. Like a show could have no viewers really, but like, like ridiculousness. Mm -hmm. I think ridiculousness has like some crazy deal with MTV that the only they can be on or like they have some crazy deal where they're on a lot. So they are like, on a lot. So. so it's like, how do you gauge your real impact with people, with the public, with this thing that's just on no matter what? Like, you can't get canceled. You can't get shut off. Like, I'm just like, it's like, it's like, or like people on the radio, they're just turning it on. Like, because mm-hmm. there's something on in the car. Like, how do you gauge your actual impact with stuff like that? I mean, is that making sense? Of course. Yeah. I would say, like, do you mean for the station or for me personally? I guess for the station. For the station? Because like like let's say let's say with let's say for example with the podcast or like music like you gauge your impact by how many people are listening to it, mm-hmm. um, how many people it influences, of course, yeah. um, like what people are saying about it. Mm-hmm. But then you get to like let's say some radio show like you don't really see many people talking about it. It's just kind of this thing that exists. It's on every day, but it's like what is the influence it's really having? Well, I guess it depends on who's listening. Okay. Yeah, like especially if it's a smaller station or even a smaller show. I don't consider my show a big show. You know, it's it's definitely not, you know, um, like a syndicated show, for instance. But it is a show that the way that I can tell that it makes a difference or that it has some sort of impact is that, for instance, now I'm able to go out and represent the station for a certain event and people actually recognize me. So I'm like, okay, you must be listening. Cause I'm not even a face. I'm a I'm a voice. They recognize your voice. Yeah, the that you know that and that's is the that coolest. also weird too? Not like people not knowing your face, but like, yeah. Yes, it is weird, but at the same time, I kind of appreciate it. Okay. I don't know. It's kind of a comforting thing. Like if you saw me, you wouldn't you know, you wouldn't say anything to me mm. unless you heard me talking or something, which very recently happened. For instance, we had one of the um. One of our listeners, because we have this giveaway all summer happening right now, the Hot 91, 91 Days of Summer. And one of the listeners came back to the studio because they wanted to meet us. Like, it was me and a couple of the other personalities sitting in there. And they wanted to take a picture with us. And she was like, yeah, I won this, this, and that. And when the DJ started talking, he was like, oh, were you one of my listeners? Blah, blah, blah. And I said something. And she's like, no, I won it from her. It was her. As soon as I started talking. And I was like, that is so funny. Because, like... Mm. How do you, I don't know. I, I guess I don't really think of it like that anymore because I'm in the space. 
But then I remember being a kid and being on, you know, listening to the radio on my way to school or something. And then maybe seeing a flyer for an event that this radio personality is hosting. And I'm like, I don't know. It's like almost weird. Like I'm almost detaching that. Like, no, you're this voice. You, you have a face. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, you you like, get like so lost in what you're doing. You can not even like really think about the impact yeah, on other people. Yeah. No, but uh, back to what you were saying about the impact of the station though. I will definitely say that you can tell based on, I guess, the community response when you are in places physically or when you host things. Because there are people who will tell you or want to donate to the station. There are people who want to be involved in some sort of events that we have. Like, is there anything we can do to help it? There are people who um, simply, I don't know, just come up to you at events saying, I've been listening, y'all are, some lady literally told us, y'all are the only station that I listen to. Like, I think it's really from the personal experiences that you have with the listeners. As far as the analytics and such, the back of the house handles all that stuff. You know, I'm in the front of the house just talking. But, um, you know, they, I'm sure, would be able to go in more depth about, like, you know, how you can tell based off of numbers and things like that. But from my personal experience, I think it has a lot to do with the connection that you have to people when you actually are sitting and talking to them in real life. Or somebody calls into the show and wins something and they're super excited and they're like, I'm always trying to call, I'm always trying to win, but I never get through. Or I listen to your show every day, you know, you guys make, you know, it's just little stuff like that and little experiences like that that you realize like, wow, this this does make a difference. This is a real thing. I, I called in to um, DJ DC has something on 103 Jams one time. He was like, call in for some shit. Mm-hmm. So I'm calling in. Like, I'm calling like five, six times just trying to get through. I didn't mm-hmm. expect to get through. Mm-hmm. He answers the phone. I just froze up. He was like, where are you ah! from? He was like, where are you from? I was like, uh, like uh, 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 Newport News. Uh, like, Newport <laughs> News. He was like, shout out to Newport News. Um, okay, so you originally wanted to be a news anchor on mm-hmm. camera. You're getting your master's right now. You're the host. Where I discovered you as um, at is um, being a guitarist for Critical yeah. Space Theory. What is up with your musical career right now? So I've been a musician my entire life, literally. I okay. just learned how to play the guitar, though. I'm self-taught guitarist. It's been about. It's been almost a year and a half. It's been a year and a half since I started playing guitar. So Critical Space Theory was your first like time playing guitar. Just yeah. As so I had started band. learning guitar like a couple of months prior. Oh wow. Um. Yeah, but I guess we just. I don't know. It just worked. What were you doing before that? Before guitar? Before guitar. So I primarily play violin. I'm like classically trained is what I say. Like I've been playing the violin and it wasn't like a little, you know, I played it in eighth grade. Like, no, I played the violin from fifth grade. Um, Professionally is what I'll call it. But with an orchestra up until 12th grade or my first year in college. Okay. Um, But I've played it. That's pretty much my whole life. I've always played violin. So that's how, that's the first string instrument that I played. But I also play like the ukulele. I feel like most people could play that. Can most people play that? I can't. I was about to say, you know what? Like, <laughs> I don't even know what that bitch looks like, to be honest with you. <laughs> Pull up it's a ukulele real quick. It's like this big. The Hawaiian. I'm about to Google it. Ooh. Oh, a mini guitar? I might look that up. Like you, somewhere you with a rainbow on. type. Yeah, that one. You're talking about a mini guitar. <laughs> Let me see. I don't even know how to spell that. Ukulele. Uka- I'm going to spell that as cl- close as I can. Tell this me is, how you spell it. looks like a guitar. That's a ukulele. Okay. You know... On, that picture does look like a regular sized instrument. No, it's small. Man playing yeah. ukulele. Look at what's okay. the man's name? I mean, name it's, it's who, a guitar though. That? Yeah. Who did what? Who re- recorded the, the "Somewhere Over the Rainbow"? What was his name? What? He's from Hawaii. His name is Long, and I, I I wouldn't even try to butcher it like that. He passed away though, but he has that famous recording of "Somewhere Over." Mm. I don't know, but I remember the phase of of hip hop where like all the rappers would get them people with the mini guitars playing it behind them. While You're, doing, like, you a, have me so weak you know on that a mini guitar. I mean, it is though. That's well. First of all, Karen, it's different Karen said strings. That. It's only four strings. So the ukulele. It was a it was a phase of hip hop where <laughs> all the rappers did freestyles or like did acapella versions of their songs to people playing ukuleles behind them. Okay, that's cool. I didn't know about that one. I didn't. I think of that. I think of Christopher Drew, Never Shout Never. That's how I found out about the ukulele. Like, Mm, so you're playing a violin. Yeah, dabbling the ukulele. Yeah, because I was in high school. I was in this thing called Jam Club, and it was just kids who played a bunch of weird instruments. Like one kid, like it. It's somebody played the accordion. Somebody, the same person actually played the banjo. Um, it, it was just a bunch of different instruments but also like orchestral so you know i was like oh i'll play the violin but then the guy that was in it um with me who well he's my ex-boyfriend from high school but nonetheless whatever um he taught me how to play the ukulele so i started playing that um i played the piano because my dad plays piano so naturally i just wanted to you know play music with my dad um 
And if I wanted to play bass guitar, I absolutely could because it's the same strings as the violin. So, mm. so yeah. I guess you're all, so all this stuff you're like playing like orchestra, like live music. Mm -hmm. I guess you were never really like dropping music or like it didn't translate no. to like putting stuff out. Never. I didn't, I didn't ever consider doing, well, it wasn't ever a dream of mine. I love music through and through. I love to play instruments. I love making music with people through and through. I love that. It's like, that is one of my passions. Um, but I never really considered putting music of my own out. No. I don't know why. It's kind of like more of a thing that I do to connect with people, I guess. Like, I feel like connecting with somebody musically is like, it's it's a much deeper level than even having conversation with them. Something about it. I don't know. Mm, it's like, I don't know. It's like an unspoken bond. Yes, actually. It's, it's like, I, it's something you can feel though. Literally, you can feel it. And I point to the heart, even though I think that's a little cliche, but it's true. You feel it right here in your chest. I don't know, for me at least. Um, but... Yeah, I've always played instruments all my life, but I picked up guitar because one of my friends from California, um, he plays guitar. And so I was like, that's really cool. I want to try learning how to do that. But also sometimes like I just hear a song that I really love and I'm like, I want to play it. I just want to play that song that I really love. So I'll pick up whatever instrument it is and I try to learn how to play it. So my dad got me a guitar for Christmas and I just started trying to learn how to play it. And that's, uh, the that's what happened. Ended up in a band. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like, how did that even happen? And the first mm. thing, when that even first happened, I was telling my bandmates, I was like, y'all, like, I'm a beginner. I really don't know how, exactly what I'm doing, but somehow it just, like, worked out. Yeah, I really like Critical Space Theory. I hope you guys do a lot of stuff together. Thank you. Um, we'll see what happens with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, because all you guys do music individually, or they do music individually. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, okay, so... What do you think is next for you? You're doing your master's right now. Is mm -hmm. it, I guess it's your last year or? No. So actually I just started my master's last semester. So I have another semester, another year and semester this semester. Wait, wait. Yep. Another year and a semester. Then you'll have your master's in broadcasting. That's what it's called. This will be master's in media production. In media production. Yeah, in media production. Well, communications, media production. Do you have any goals or any plans of where you want to take this, like radio hosting after college, after being at Hot ninety one? Like, I definitely do. What do you? But thinking? I am open. What are you thinking right now? At you leaving I'm Virginia? Why you gotta put me on the spot no, like that? Look, I love my state. I love Virginia. I love the 757. I think that we are becoming such an explosive area as far as a space for creatives. I'm proud of us. I'm, I think this is good because people are going to start migrating here. I really believe that. That's already believe happening. That. I, bro, I, I, really? I think last year, I, I was, forgot who I was speaking to. I think it was, um, what's the girl we had on here? that Karina. Karina Elise, I think her name is. Mm -hmm. she, she has a friend. Well, the, she's a painter. She mm -hmm. has a friend that moved from New York to Virginia. Wow. I think to Virginia Beach to paint. That is dope. I'm like, that's the first time I ever heard of anybody yeah. moving here to it, create. It almost yeah. sounds backwards. Yeah. But that's amazing. And I'm, I love that for us. I'm so happy So you're just saying, you're basically saying all this in a nice way that you're leaving Virginia. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that I you know, definitely want to experience the world. Like yeah. I want to experience other places. Home is never going anywhere. I love Virginia down. So I will always like, even when I told my um, general manager, I was like, as soon as we hit a uh, hundred years of the school, cause right now we're at 90 years. I was like, I'm donating $50,000. Like I love NSU because they helped me to grow to who I am. I love Virginia because this is really where I began to develop, but I visited another place and visit? it's just like, I found myself there. Mm, where'd you visit? San Francisco. San Francisco? I did. People talk, People say San, uh, San Francisco is shitty, though. A lot of people say that, and I think they say that because of maybe, dare I say even, uh, number one, is expensive. It is extremely expensive. I think they actually have, well, it's either San Francisco and then some part near D.C., but yeah. it's like the most expensive real estate in America. Yep. San Francisco, yeah. San Jose. I think San Jose is actually number one okay. for the highest uh, cost of living in, this, in the United what States. What was it about San Francisco that like oh you gosh, found I yourself at? I could go on forever. So the first time that I visited there, like number one, the music scene is crazy there. Everybody is talented. Everybody's talented. Everybody plays an instrument. Everybody can sing. There's just so much music everywhere. And another thing about them is that you can literally feel the energy in the air. In certain areas, um, it's like just so 
zen. And I hate to use that word because it's so ugh to me, but it's like, it's just like. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever heard anybody use that in a sentence. Oh, okay. Very well, demure, very zen. Oh my very gosh. Mindful. Kill me. <laughs> I saw this girl. Enough with the demure. Not to cut you off, uh, I saw this girl. She was like, uh, it was somebody from New York. Because you know how people are making the videos, they're like very demure. Very demure, very She was mindful. like, I'm about to go in this EBT office and going to be very <laughs> Bronx, very suck my dick. Very, she was like, <laughs> she was like, not demure. I was like, okay. <laughs> like, go off, girl, period. Because I'm sick of the demure trend I am. Even though, look, I felt, I, I was guilty. I used it one time. I but used that's it, it. I used it last week. I named the pod we dropped, or like the other day with DJ All Natural. Uh-huh. The, the title of the podcast on YouTube is called A Very Demure, Very Mindful Podcast. So it's the all for a podcast. Nobody will ever forget that you have used that. Like, it's stamped. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, it was stamped. But, <laughs> but, but yeah, nonetheless, so you're in like, San Francisco. Yeah, but like the vibe is just so welcoming. People are very open. And not even in a way that's like, well, no, I was going to say not in a way that's weird. Some people are weird, and that's true. But in a way that where it's like, I wish, I wish I could like find the words. It's just... It's a very inspiring place to me. Was there a lot of homeless people there that you saw? Plenty. In certain areas, it's like concentrated, like that's that's one thing I think is weird yeah. about the bigger cities. Mm-hmm. Like it's you, sad. You, you you talk about L.A., you even mm-hmm. go to D.C., New York. There are streets lined. Where yeah, there are it's, tents. I don't know. That just it just yeah. feels unsafe. I don't know if I want to no, like raise sure. a family there. I saw some things. Uh, I definitely saw some things that I you would not see in Virginia. Or maybe you would, but I mean, I don't be in them parts, so. Did you go out there to, like, did you explore any radio jobs or, like, anything in that world? So, not necessarily in San Francisco. I did do an internship for a production company in San Diego. Um, so I was working on podcasts with them for, like, a year. But that's before I even went to San Francisco. Like, after I went to San Francisco, obviously they have their own stations and their own uh even news stations, radio stations, things like things like that. But I, one of my, I don't know why I don't like to talk about my future because I'm like, I don't know, I change my mind a lot. But as of right now, this has kind of been my dream for like two-ish years. I want to do get, get into podcasting because I do like, you know, I love connecting with people. My podcast would be people-centered. Like, I like the idea of people being open and vulnerable, but about like the human experience itself. For lack of better words, not to sound too ditzy or too crazy, but I just like to think about things like looking down like at humanity, for lack of better words. So I would want to get into something like that. But people there kind of understand that notion. They get the idea of like we're here, but like we're all experiencing life together. We're a moving force together. Like, I don't know. The vibe there was just so different to me. And I did like when I came back home because I went to San Francisco like seven times last year. And that was my first time going, like in February. And I just kept going back because I was obsessed. But um, the first time that I really started feeling like I had kind of found myself at home because I would go there and then I would come home and I would be sad was when I started radio. So I started to feel like, okay, well, maybe there is a space for that kind of thing that I want out there here too. So I'm like, you know, I could see myself staying at home, but I think a part of me is definitely, definitely sees myself kind of growing there as well mm, any yeah. ideas for what you would call your podcast yes what you thinking um that she's up there it's a secret it's not a secret i just don't know how i feel about it yet enough yeah. to say it out loud plus okay. i don't know if it, you know i'll ask you because i like your podcast name um well where did you get your podcast name i don't know i really don't know people ask me okay, why i somewhere. started a podcast mm-hmm. why i named it this I really don't know. I just do things. Mm-hmm. I just, I, as, as weird as cliche as it sounds, I literally just follow my heart. I love and that. And that's how I do everything. Yeah. Like everything, all my creative ventures start from, they stem from a kind of like life changing experience I had in, in senior year of high school. Mm-hmm. I would say I had an epiphany. I would say I had an like awakening. Mm-hmm. My mom might tell you I lost my mind at the time. People that know and me that's might, okay. you know, and I may, I might have a little bit. And that's bit. fine. Yeah. But that, changed my life and it it set me on this trajectory where it's like i that got me to where i'm at now Mm -hmm. and everything has just been following my heart i love like i want to do this and then i just do it that's i try not to overthink it i try to not think about what will happen what has happened like a lot of times especially when i'm creating like i literally feel like this moment is the only moment that exists like my life did not exist before this like this is like there is no past or future it sounds crazy, but no, I it doesn't. It's I'm like not a, kidding. I'm just I literally get lost in. in what I'm doing. I yeah. love that. I I love that for you. I feel like 
I, I would wish that on everybody. I hope that everybody gets to experience that feeling at least once. Because mm, you think about most people times. are thinking about their like fears of the future yeah. or they're thinking about their regrets of the past and that paralyzes them in the present. Yeah, that's anxiety. That's what anxiety yeah. is, living in the fa- past or living in the future. Like living mm. in the present, there is literally no other, there's nothing like it. There's no kind of peace like just living right now. Like, because this is all that exists. The past doesn't exist anymore. It's gone. The future mm. literally has never existed. It or maybe it has exist. because a, a it might be nu- an endless timeline that I, we're living in. Mm, but. A nuclear bomb might hit yeah. tomorrow. We, there, is no, in five minutes. there is no future. What are we going to do? Yeah. You know? Especially if you lived in like, the, was it the 60s and 70s where like. That I, was nuts. Where they really lived with yeah. the fear of nuclear war every day. They'd had like, uh, like not tests. What was it? Like drills in mm-hmm. schools and shit. Like they were like get under a desk for like if it's time for a nuclear bomb to hit. Yeah. Like that would even help you at all. Like I can't imagine but, that um, people actually have to endure things like that. God bless them. Like the fact that we're born at this time, I thank God. I am so grateful. Because- yeah, this is a, I would say this is the most exciting time to be alive. The most mm-hmm. interesting time. The most opportunistic time for like all people. Mm-hmm. Um, but somehow they always lead us down into this this uh trail of negativity and mm-hmm. and hating where we are and hating each other and like oh my god they don't they it's like it's like there's so much things to distract us from the beauty of the moment yeah for sure and i don't mm-hmm. think that the internet has helped that help that there's so many things that uh or so many positives rather that come come out of uh social media for instance like or even just the development of the internet over time, like the fact that we're able to communicate with people from all over, but at the same time, it's horrible for people. It's horrible for people's mental health. Like you just start this never ending cycle of comparing, of you know, thinking that you're supposed to be here when you're actually, or thinking you're supposed to be there when you're actually here. Like it, there is a lot of negativity that can come out of living on the internet. And I think a lot of us do live on the internet right now. Like just constantly glued to our phones um Mm. but at the same time i don't know i would hope that even podcasts like this or ideas like the one you just expressed as far as living in the moment i would just hope that you know that is a message that is spread or used you know use social media is used for something like that for spreading messages like that like that's what my hope would be for for our generation especially because I don't want to be negative either. It's just not looking too good. It's not looking too good. But I think that we do have the power to change that trajectory. You know? Mm. I hope so. I hope so, too. Um, I appreciate you, Alana. That might be a fire spot to leave him at. Is there anything else you want to touch on? Anything else you want to lead the people with? Your podcast may be on the way. They My podcast catch. is totally on the way. It's on the way, Yeah, for without sure. a doubt, it's on the way. But okay. what I'll leave you with is love yourself, be self-aware, learn about who you are, and then share that love with other people live life to the fullest period because we're here for one time as far as we know like just do it up live your dreams don't be scared it's okay we're all doing it hell yeah, yeah. i appreciate you mm-hmm. um excited to see what else you have coming up thank you catch thank her you on 91.1 from 10 to 2 um you need to catch you, me. all you unemployed people that's your time to shine <laughs> pull up, <laughs> pull up. he uh, said it not me <laughs> but, no, we appreciate you guys for tuning in um yeah all her links will be in the description we'll see y'all soon peace <laughs>